Joining us now is a bona fide Nigerian football legend. He won the Africa Cup of Nations in 1994, scoring two goals in that final as Nigeria beat Zambia to win their second title. He was named 1994 African Player of the Year by the Confederation of African Football. He also scored the winning goal in the final uh, at the Atlanta Olympic Games men's football event as Nigeria defeated Argentina 2-1 to claim the gold medal. And of course, as coach, he led the Golden Eagles of Nigeria to win the FIFA Under-17 World Cup in 2015. He was also former coach of the Tanzania national team who qualified for the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations, their first Africa Cup of Nations since 1980 here in Nigeria. I'm being joined by, like I said, bona fide Nigerian football legend, Emmanuel Amunike. Thank you so much for joining us on News Central TV. Thank you very much, and uh, good afternoon. Yeah, well, good afternoon, Coach. I, I can see that you're still slightly dejected, uh, as are a lot of Nigerians. But in your opinion, what did the Super Eagles do wrong last night, and what did Cote d'Ivoire do right? Uh, well, I think, uh, you know, when it comes to final, uh, a lot of details are being considered. Uh, a lot of mind game, a lot of uh, psychological point of view, how you want to approach the game, how you want to win, how you want to take your chances. And I think uh, uh, the egos, you know, they have maintained the style, the super egos have maintained the style that have been able to lead them to, to be in the final. After their first game against Equatorial Guinea, and then they switched to a system uh, that have really helped them to be, you know, uh, very solid at defensively and uh, consolidate the team and build the spirit and the confidence that, you know, enable them to be in the final. Uh, the, the game they played against Cote d'Ivoire in the group stage, you know, yeah, we won that game uh, through penalty that was, uh, you know, created by Osime and then converted by Ekon, a very good uh, captain and the leader in that team. And... Uh, uh, the Ivorians, I think in that first game, they, they were more emphasizing on, you know, trying to go through the middle of the game, which was very, very difficult for them because Nigeria was well organized defensively. Like uh, right now, not happy with coach Joseph Pesero, but and some of them have argued that he pretty much played the, in the same team throughout the entirety of the tournament. Uh, he took 25 players, and he seems to have just used a strong core of just 15, 16 players who played at the tournament. Could, could fatigue have been a factor yesterday? Well, of course. Fatigue is also part of it. And uh, uh, if, you, if you have these players uh, playing uh, every game in this tournament, we should... We should we shouldn't forget the stress that the tournament himself bring into uh, to the psych psychological aspect to the players. Um, and when you use these players throughout the tournament, of course, uh, you have to know that there will be, you know, fatigue that is creeping in. And mostly when it's a final game, uh, the mindset, the stress, the psychological aspect of, of the whole scenario, you know, way down on a player then it all depends on the ability of the player to be able to, to withstand those uh, moments of pressure. Mm -hmm. well, well, Coach, two of your players, two players that you actually brought to the limelight when you won the FIFA Under-17 World Cup in 2015, uh, Victor Simen and Samuel Chukweze, well, they, they, well, or Simen especially, he's been brilliant during this tournament. He didn't exactly sparkle, scored only uh, one goal. Um, and... and you know, well, uh, Chukwu is also didn't exactly sparkle yesterday as well. In your opinion, considering the fact that Osime came into this competition highly rated, he was reigning African Football of the Year, something you understand having been a former African Football of the Year yourself. And of course, Chukwu is a key winger with AC Milan. He didn't exactly set the tournament alight. What could have been the cause for this? Well, I think uh, when you are forming a team, you have to look at this, uh, the characteristics of players that, uh, that are to your disposal. What are their qualities? Uh, how effective are they? Where are they more dangerous? And then uh, you come up with a team that can you know, uh, make that uh, to be positive for the players to function at their best. Uh, Osime, in this, in this uh, AFCON, you know, Osime have... Uh, spent a lot of time in terms of uh, helping the team to defend when they need to defend. And when you have a striker that 
is so dangerous that moves a lot. And then at the end of the day, you know, he's coming back deep to defend. Then I think he reduces some of his quality. Uh, Mozime is a player that uh, when you look at him, he moves a lot and he needs players that can actually, you know, give him those balls into spaces where he can become effective and functional. Uh, Chukwe is a likewise, um, Simon Moses likewise, but of course, uh, you must have players that can complement the effort of these players. When you look at the Code of War yesterday, uh, the Adinga uh, of a guy that, you know, created the two goals, you could see that most of the time, you know, he's receiving the ball close to our, that their quality, and look at the, how you can, you know, come up with a plan that can aid to their own quality to become much functional and much better to the interests of the team. Mm. Mm. Well, well, Coach, uh, going forward, um, looking at everything that transpired before this Africa Cup of Nations and the Super Eagles of Nigeria playing two draws, the likes of Lesotho and Zimbabwe losing also in a friendly match to Guinea, but coming into this competition, playing a gold, uh, a, a one all draw with Equatorial Guinea, but also recording five consecutive victories, losing in the final, there seems to be some promise. Is there some hope on the horizon for this team? Um, can we now say that we do have a team looking for that uh, at, at our stuttering start at the 2026 FIFA World Cup qualifiers? Is there confidence that we could possibly ride on the performance of this team, go on to win the next Africa Cup of Nations in 2025, and even qualify for the 2026 FIFA World Cup? Yeah, of course. We have a team. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, this crop of players that are coming up now, uh, it's, a, it's a kind of blessing to Nigeria in terms of you know, having crop of players that are talented, doing very well in their respective club. But what, what we need to do is to find a balance, how we can be able to you know, manage the best out of these players and how we can have balance in the team. Uh, we, have a, we have players and we shouldn't be you know, uh, scared about uh, whether the future is bright. The future is bright, but we just need to do what is needful. We need to you know, prepare our players. We need to tell them uh, to understand. I don't think also, if I say we need to tell them, I think uh, probably I'm not being fair in terms of what I'm saying. These players, they understand what Nigerians you know, feel. These players, they are proud to play for their country, and uh, they will always remain proud to honor Nigeria. But at the end of the day, you know, we must find that balance that will make us to be a more a much, much better and a stronger team that can compete at all levels. Mm. Well, 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 Coach, um, looking at Coach Joseph Pesero now, uh, he seemed to have failed at the final hurdle. But I personally, I think he did pretty well. Uh, what, what would, how would you assess his performance at this Africa Cup of Nations? Uh, would, you, would you agree to him being offered a contract extension? Well, one thing I can tell you is that uh, uh, Joseph Pesero is a colleague like myself. I was a coach. He's a coach. So I think uh, he, he has done very well in this tournament. Uh, he has been able to guide the team to the final. Unfortunately, in every final, only one team has to win it. Uh, the luck was not on the side of uh, Nigeria to, to win the Afghan. Him and the boys, you know, they have been able to, to do the best they can and to reach to the final. So we must, you know, recommend them and we must recognize that and we must also appreciate their effort. Uh, in terms of appointing and employing, well, I'm, it's not in my position. I'm not a people that employ, I'm not NFF. So I think uh, when the time comes, the people that are in that position, you know, they have to look at things and discuss with him. But what I can tell you as a colleague, you know, uh, he has done so well. He has been able, you know, to guide these players to be in the final. And uh, I think uh, we must recommend them and congratulate them for that. Mm, I totally agree. But if per, per chance that the Super Eagles uh, handlers, the owners of Super Eagles, the Nigeria Football Federation, decide that they want to go in a different direction, would you be interested in that job as a former coach, a former player of repute? Well, I'm a Nigerian, and uh, all my life, uh, from my days as a kid, uh, I have served Nigeria as a player, and I continue to serve Nigeria. And I think if Nigerians find me fit to add value, and not just about coaching, you know, one thing is 
coaching is, is different, is to add value to the team. And if Nigeria find me value of that, of course, it's a welcome development. But for now, I think, uh, you know, it's not necessary talking about uh, this issue. Uh, let us, you know, sympathize with our players. Let us sympathize with the team. Uh, they, they're going through a lot of uh, sadness in their mind, just like other Nigerians also are going, because uh, I think yesterday game would have been a boost uh, to a lot of Nigerians, would have been a lot of joy to the players. I think uh, we all want the best for our country. We want the best for our football, and it all has to be uh, you know, respected. Mm -hmm. Coach, I totally agree. I believe that uh, as a patriot and a legend and, a, and a, an excellent, well-trained coach, uh, Nigeria would be lucky, any national team in Africa would be lucky to have you at, at the helm. And still talking about coaching, how would you respond to that incredible story of the Ivorian coach, Emma's uh, Faye, a man who was the assistant coach, never believed he was going to get this job at any time, point in time. After the sacking of uh, uh, Jean-Paul Gasset, he took over, won the Africa Cup of Nations, he's a hero. It's an incredible story, Coach, and you really must admit that in his wildest dreams, he would never have thought that possible. How, how would you assess his own performance and what he did right from the first round to eventually win the biggest prize in, in uh, African sport? Well, I think we shouldn't forget that this guy was a player. <laughs> he was once a player, and uh, he was once in the dressing room as a player, and today uh, he's a coach sharing the same dressing room with his players. I think it's, it's all about, you know, understanding your players. It's all about transmitting confidence to your players. It's all about making them to believe that uh, the journey that you people are taking is, is achievable. And I think this is, is, is something that he did. As simple as that, he just he was able to, to transmit confidence when all hopes are being lost, when even <laughs> nobody was, you know, thinking that... Uh, uh, Code of War could mount anything, but you know, in his quiet moment, in his reflection, he was able, you know, to transmit confidence to the players, and the players they listen to him. You know, uh, the players they are human beings, just like every other person. In as much as uh, we look at them as a as star, but one thing they are human beings. They have feeling. They have blood. They have their moment of ups and down. And uh, when you can be able to, you know, uh, you know, talk to them, make them see things from a realistic point of view, I think they, they will listen to you and they will pay attention to you. And that is exactly what the coach did. And you see, one thing is not just because he's an assistant. And I keep on saying it. Uh, if, we don't learn to, <laughs> if we don't learn to develop our people, mm. if we don't learn to develop ourselves, uh, it's just like kind of waste nation. I live in Spain. I did my coaching course in Spain. But I can tell you, the Spanish people, the Spanish Federation, they are constantly developing their people. When I talk about developing their people, they are constantly involving their people in all departments that will enhance their football. Not everybody will be a coach. You have different departments that are functioning, that combine those departments, then it becomes real. And I think... We need to begin in Africa to believe in ourselves. We need to begin to encourage ourselves. We cannot continue. It's we that will be telling, it's we that will be telling our coaches that they are not good. Mm. It's we that will be saying all manners of things against our coaches. Nobody is perfect. Nobody wakes up today or was born today and start running. You have to go through process before you, you start you know, running. Uh, I remember when I was the under-17 coach, the, when I was assembling this Osime and the rest, a lot were saying, ah, these guys are too small, these guys cannot play. But, and I told them, I said, yeah, they cannot play today, but they will play tomorrow. Uh, yes, they did play. Well, they didn't play tomorrow, but they played yesterday. Yeah. Uh, and, that, and that's uh, a fact. But finally, Coach, before I let you go, uh, I have to ask you, what was your impression of this Africa Cup of Nations? Some people have used the words magnificent, fantastic, incredible, enthralling, entertaining. How would you describe the 2023 Africa Cup of Nations? Well, I think anything that, uh, that can define this Afcon is so exciting. I think... It's a, so exciting, it's surprising, and uh, uh, I'm glad that uh, African football, you know, we're beginning to set the standard, not what people think, uh, maybe 
few countries are going to win. We have seen minors, you know, they have done so fantastically in this team. We have seen the so-called big teams. They have been sent home. So a, a whole lot have happened into this outcome. But it's a lesson for people to learn because uh, the, the smaller teams, they are coming up also. The smaller teams, they're beginning to have players also that can compete at a top level, which is good. And uh, we should welcome it. It's so exciting. And I hope the next edition in Morocco uh, can continue to rise and grow much, much better than what we have seen in Cote d'Ivoire. Mm. Cote d'Ivoire has set the standard for the Africa Cup of Nations, and we will leave it at that. 1994 African Player of the Year, Olympic gold medalist, coach of repute, Emmanuel Abuneke, bona fide Nigerian football legend. Thank you so much for your time and sharing your thoughts with us on In the Game here on New Central. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.